Good morning, and welcome to another episode of Today I Work On. And today, we were supposed to work on the installation of the garage door, and I was super excited, and I worked all weekend to get it ready for today, and I made the phone call this morning to ask the company what time they were supposed to come, and they said they're coming tomorrow. So it was a, it was a, just a stab in the heart, and I'm super upset because tomorrow I'm going to work on something super cool, and I can't wait to show you, and I cannot be here to video them installing their garage door. So unfortunately, that's a bummer, but it'll be fine because, like I said, I can't wait to show you what we're doing tomorrow. So because of that, I still have plenty of things to do in the barn, so I'm going to work on the barn today. Uh, I'm going to work on the smart lock system for the entrance door. I'm going to insulate the rest of the wall. And then lastly, I'm going to work on the OG water line from the 60s that was ran from the house to the barn. Uh, it's like a special type of plastic. It's not a PEX. It's not a CPVC. It's not copper. It's, it's like a, it's like a, plastic water line I, i've never seen it before um it holds water it's been holding water for since the late 60s so i am confident that it'll continue to hold water and i'm gonna get a little creative and try to hook up from this plastic water line and run some pecs out and put in a spigot um right basically underneath the window so that's the plan for today let me stop talking and let me start working and I hope you enjoy this episode. Before I start working, I just want to mention if you are liking these episodes, please click that like button. And if you love the episodes and you want to continue to see them and get notifications, please click that subscribe button so I can continue to make all these awesome episodes with pretty cool content. And now let me get to work. I just want to go over the uh, Yale smart lock I'm installing on my door. Um, it's really cool. So it's a touch pad, it's a touchpad screen. Uh, and it's, it's not a digital, it's, it's a push button. Uh, the batteries go in on the inside. But the cool feature with this smart lock is right here. You see these two little metal dots? Say you're say you can't get in the garage, the garage door say the power goes up, garage door is broken, and you haven't used your door in ages, and you go and you press your code and the battery's dead. How do you get into the garage? What do you do? You take a nine volt batter battery and you put it on these two contacts and it powers up the lock system which I thought was pretty cool. So um, I like that. The, sec the second thing I like about it is it's Z-Wave. <clears throat> so if you have a smart home, you could program this lock with your Z-Wave and you could throw it on your app on your phone. So you could just open and close the door how you wish. You could see if you left the door unlocked, uh, you can have a bunch of cool features on it. So uh, we have a yell lock in the main part of our house. I've used them for years. Uh, I think this one was like 150 bucks, give or take. I'll put the link down in the uh, description area, but I recommend them. Uh, yell to me is a little bit of a better grade of a lock than a quick set, or you know, it's maybe maybe it's a little bit better than a schlage, but uh, I. For my actual door locks, I feel like yellow is the way to go. So let me get installing this and I'll see you in a bit.
lock is installed, so perfecto. So I, I still need to program it. So it lights up really nicely. And like I said, if the battery dies and you're locked out, nine volt battery will charge it all up for you. So pretty, pretty cool feature. Uh, it also has the Z-Wave, it's inside this box. And like I said, I'll program that to the house. And it's, there you go, another, another project done. Moving on to the water line. So I'm up to the, I'm now I'm gonna work on the water line. So you see, this is kind of a funky black pipe. I don't know what it is, but I cannot, it's not half inch, it's not three quarters, it's like a five eighths. It, it could be like a hose. I don't know what they did in the sixties cause it was like the wild, wild west, but it holds water. So I'm gonna keep it. I mean, worst case scenario, I gotta dig a new water line. It doesn't matter. I would be fine with it, but I'm gonna try this out and I'm gonna keep it accessible just in case it doesn't work out. And for now, what I'm gonna do is I bought the connection that works and then from here over, I'm gonna run a piece of PEX. So it's, it's a 2020 standard. So I'm gonna have to run to Home Depot, grab some stuff and I will, uh, I'll be back. here I might as well grab another 10 sheets of drywall but this card this is like an OG Home Depot card because do you see how wide that is super wide it's bringing back memories to figure out this puzzle let's do this I left Home Depot and I need to go grab some lunch because I missed out on breakfast. And a man's gotta eat. A man's gotta eat. When you're working hard like this, physical labor all day, it's kind of a pro tip. You can't, you gotta feed yourself because food is energy. And when my stomach's nice and full, I work a lot better. So I'll have to get some pizza, some really good margarita pizza at the local pizza shop. And I bought the drywall. And when we uh, want to get back, I'm going to work on the water line. So see you in a bit. going to drill a hole through the siding and uh, screw in the new hose cock and then I'll put everything together on the inside so I got a good little plan going and it should be pretty straightforward so let me get to work all right so I drilled my hole I'm gonna stick this bad boy just like this. Actually, not that, like that, like this. I'm gonna screw it in. And this is the first time I've purchased a shark bite. You can see it has like little fins on it, actually. A shark bite um, quick connect hose cock. I guess it's like a new product. I'm not sure, but um, I'm gonna hook this up. And people think these shark bites are like the devil of plumbing. If you go on YouTube and you see these videos, oh, shark bites so bad, they're gonna fail. They take out all these tests and they're like, oh, it's a little O-ring and that's all you have. Personally, been in the trade 22 years, I see zero problems with these shark bites. These will last 
for as long as you have decent water. If you have water that's not good, that's acidic or whatever, maybe you might have a problem, but rubber lasts a long time. Um, and I have full confidence in these shark bites. They come with a 10 year warranty. And since I think the first time I've installed PEX and shark bites were back in 2008, I've never had a call back on them. Um, so we're talking 12 going on 13 years. So I'm fully confident with these systems. I know a lot of plumbers are not because they tend to be a little bit stuck in their ways, but uh, I always like to adapt to new technology. So um, I'm going to install this in my own home and I'm looking forward to doing it. So let me get to work. And it's good, I got, a, I got a stud right here so I could put at least one of these screws in and a stud. Done. All right, so I uh, I finished up hooking the PEX line to this plastic water special line with a threaded ball valve. So I have a shut off here, perfecto. I'll have a shut off in the basement of my house. So I have two shut offs. Um, I also have a bleeder valve. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have the bleeder valve on the bottom just in case I want to bleed the line or just leave it open during the winter. Um, so that's maybe I'll do something like that. I don't know. But uh, unfortunately, I do not have this water hooked up in the basement to test it because before we bought this house, previous homeowners installed a CPVC line and unfortunately it cracked and it flooded the basement, I think six, seven years ago. So it's never been fixed. And I do have some like line ready to go to hook it up, but I'm just not ready for that yet. So I did this today because I want to insulate the wall and I want to throw some wall board on, but I will cut this out. So I have an access panel here. So now this is done. I could throw my insulation on this whole wall and throw some drywall up. So finally, I'm ready to drywall everything with no little projects in the way. So let me get to more insulation. And actually before I insulate, I'm gonna take out the rest of the sheetrock that I bought. So let me get to that. truck out of the mud as you saw that's always a little bit fun and sketchy but it dried up just enough where I felt confident I would not get stuck so now you know today was kind of like totally thrown off because of the garage door not coming in so I'm trying to like improvise for the day so now I'm going to clean up the long wall and get as much insulation as I can uh, whatever, how much that back could take. And then if I have some extra time, I'll do drywall. Probably not. It's getting late in the day already, but uh, I'll see what I can do. Let me get to work. So I almost finished the wall uh, with the insulation. I'm a little, I'm a few pieces short, so which is fine. 
no big deal. I'm getting a lot done today. Um, I just want to go over, I was talking about the plumbing and I just want to go over what was run in the 60s and what we have today. So if you could see, this is a half inch piece of PEX piping. Now, this is like some funky plastic ABS style of piping. Um, it's not very thick in diameter. It's very thin. It's probably like an eighth of an inch. And this is, the PEX is way thicker. I don't know if you could see that on the camera. And now the coolest thing is you could almost fit, you could fit the uh, half inch PEX inside of this tubing. So if someone could tell me what this is, I would appreciate it because I've been doing this 22 years. I've never seen any type of pipe like this. Um, I still think it's gonna work just fine. Like I said, it's not the perfect setup, but it's for the barn, you know, like whatever. So uh, that's that. Um, right now, I'm gonna clean up and then I will recap the video and give you a preview for tomorrow. cleaned up, I tidied up the barn. It's clean, I can walk around, which is nice because it was a mess. Uh, tomorrow, the barn, on um, the barn, <laughs> the garage door will go in. We will not be here, unfortunately. So since I'm not gonna be here and I can't watch over what the garage door guys are doing, I'm gonna leave them a stud finder because I have a nicely painted, beautiful ceiling and I don't want them to put 500 holes in it trying to find the rafters. Now, I guess you could follow the unfinished area, but you never know. I've seen some crazy things happen, so unfortunately I will not be able to time-lapse the garage door install, which is fine, but when I get back from tomorrow morning and I'll go over the garage door, but in the morning, we're doing something really cool. So I can't wait to show everybody. We're super excited. And the only, I'll give you, a, I'll throw you a little bone. The, it's something mechanical and it has more horsepower than our Dodge Viper. To put it in perspective, the Dodge Viper has 645 horsepower, which is a lot of horsepower and it's super fun to drive. But this, has 740 horsepower. So, but it's not a car. So we will, you will see tomorrow. And um, if you like the video, please pop that like button. I would appreciate it. And if you really like the episode and you like the story um, and love the channel, subscribe. I would appreciate it. So I could keep continuing to do this and um, that's it for today, so I will see you tomorrow. Take care.